Hello and welcome back to Socially Distant Discover Nature. This week we are continuing our theme from last week on butterflies and the big butterfly count. But first of all, let's have a catch up. This week Naomi has sent in some more pictures of bees. This time they're in flight and they look incredible. We've got a buff tail or white tail bumblebee here in mid flight. And in these photos, we've got a red tailed bumblebee. Ivana's also sent us this photo of the beautiful wildflower meadow at St. Nick's. And this rather striking dung beetle or door beetle from Cliftonings. The big butterfly count survey organised by Butterfly Conservation is still underway and on until Sunday the 9th of August so you still have a chance to take part. All it takes is 15 minutes of your time to watch a particular area or walk through a different area and count the maximum number of each type of butterfly you see at the same time. Last week we gave you ID tips for some of the butterflies in the family Nymphalidae. These included the Red Admiral, Painted Lady, Peacock, and small tortoise shell. This week we'll continue with some more butterflies in the family Nymphalidae, but they are less gaudy and colourful, but they still have their own subtle beauty, sometimes a bit too subtle, which can make identification tricky. So we're now going to explore some butterflies that are mostly brown and or orange. As always, a lot of the ID information I'm using has come from the Bloomsbury Pocket Guide by Richard Lewington, which has got the incredible artwork in. If only I was on commission. Buy it. Buy it now! The first butterfly I want to introduce you to is the Meadow Brown. In flight, it does appear kind of dullish brown, but you do get a hint of orange. Now there's orange that you can see when the wings are closed. When the wings are open, the females have a large amount of orange on them, but the males are almost completely dark, just with little eye spots there. I'd like to also draw your attention to the wings when they're open, the eye spots have that single white dot. This is particularly important on the females with their oranginess, as it will separate them from a confusion species that we'll cover in a moment. In fact, that moment is right now, and the next species, and the confusion species, is the gatekeeper butterfly. With only a quick glance, the gatekeeper butterfly can be easily confused with the meadow brown, particularly the female meadow browns and their oranginess on the upper sides of the wings. The way to tell the gatekeeper apart is that it is smaller than the meadow brown and has more orange to it, a much more vibrant, bright colour. The orange is more solid, covers more of the forewings and also has a lot of orange on the hind wings as well. On the upper side of those forewings, another identification feature is to look out for the two white pupils, the two white dots within that dark circle. If you're seeing the butterfly from the side because its wings are closed, you can still see the double white spots within the dark circle on the underside of the forewings, but also the hindwing underside. Compared to the meadow brown, it's kind of more colourful and it's got a little sequence of white dots as well those dots are not present in the meadow brown. The next butterfly I'd like to show you is the ringlet. Now, if you get a good look at this when its wings are open, it's really quite easy to identify, especially the fresh specimens, really dark, beautiful white trim around the wing edges and it's got those little circular markings which are the, the rings giving its name ringlet. 
But fortunately, they soon fade, so they can become quite light brown and beige and can get quite ragged. That makes identification a little more tricky. The other difficulty is they rarely stand still at all. But you can identify them when they're in flight. They have quite a, a low to the ground flight, low, weak, fluttering, as if they can barely fly, as if they're really struggling. The general impression you get of a ringlet is a, a dark butterfly, and you might think there could be confusion with maybe the, the male meadow brown, because that's mostly dark, but there on the ringlet, there's no orange, there's no hint of any orange at all. Dark butterfly, low weak flight, it's going to be a ringlet. Next up is the speckled wood butterfly. So, easily named, it's speckled. It's got little cream spots on a brown background. Wood, it usually is in woodland glades, particularly in areas of dappled shade. So, dark and light together. You might get one in your garden, potentially, depending on where you are. It is a brown butterfly, it has cream spots, it's not too dark, therefore it's not going to be confused really with a ringlet, and there's no hints of orange, therefore it's not really a matter brown or a gatekeeper. You can also spot it via its behaviour, it often will perch in a patch of sunlight, quite territorial, we've seen flurrying up to intercept any males coming into its territory, or to find any females as well. And another interesting fact that I only learned recently through reading this book is that they're not great flower feeders. They actually feed on honeydew, which is the sugary secretion pumped out as a waste product by green fly and aphids. Um, yeah, very strange. The final butterfly I want to introduce you to is not part of the Nymphalidae family. It's part of the Lycenidae family, and this is the small copper. It's a small butterfly, very, very beautiful, vibrant colours. What you're looking out for is this intense orange colour on the wings, on the sort of upper sides of the wings, particularly the fore wings, coupled with the very dark spots and the kind of dark brown hind wings. When it opens up its wings and you notice it for the first time, it's like an explosion of sunlight, a fire. It's really good. So that's it for today's episode. Hopefully this will have helped boost your identification skills for butterflies. Good luck with the survey. We've kind of covered that whole central band of butterflies there, so you should be able to work out what they are. Have fun doing it and do let us know what your results are. But um, more importantly, let Butterfly Conservation know what your results are, submitting them through the website or using the app. Good luck and thank you very much for watching and goodbye.